the guitar has always informed my music composition and sort of like the day, the day when you could plug a guitar synthesizer into Sibelius and have a keyboard next to you and the parts are connected to the full score it was like a single tear dripped down my cheek. Because that was then, and at some point I also had it so you could have an audio um, wave file recorder that could play the same tempos and stuff as Sibelius, but I don't, I, I somehow lost that technology recently. But uh, so that is a, it does inform, and a lot of the things I worked on um, and still work on is interpreting what my gestures are on guitar and how that would translate into another instrument. So it's idiomatic on that instrument, but still coming from a performance-based gesture, which then you use your brain to compose out, you know, your sort of comp chops or whatever. Per pluck reward is great. It's a greater reward than the per note created reward in terms of effort that goes into it. I mean, like you can sort of go like, okay, that's the note, or you can be like, there are eight million notes. Which one am I going to write down? So it's a different part of your brain, and it uh, keeps your fingers moving, and, and then uh, it's fun to interact. I love interacting with other musicians, so that's anything that can make that happen. That's and that's why I compose too. It's like to eventually get to the part where you're working with other people. Um, and then the nature of the guitar is that you're sort of always doing that from the beginning. If, you, if you're in the learning pick style, country, rock, jazz guitar, it's always about interacting with other people. And so that's how the composing grew out of that as I was a kid. At one point I did try to live in New York, and I know they say if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere, but I had a, like a, a, a night where I said if I get out of here, I could like have time to write and be able to afford to write and spend time to write rather than trying to struggle to pay, um, to pay some rent in New York. It was kind of like the, more, the rent costs this much, I want to do this, I want to be able to build my catalog you know, from the ground up and really write, and um, it wasn't you know, at the time where things were coming with funding, and not all music does come with funding, it doesn't mean you shouldn't write it. You have to find a way to write it. So, um, that, that, then I realized that I could, I could get out. Composing world is, looks pretty cool right now. I mean, there are lots of people writing music. There's a group popping up in every town in America that plays new music in the style of what's going on in Manhattan and Brooklyn, and probably what uh, you know, Bang on a Can started doing a long time ago, and the and, and, uh, things like that. Or you know, there's one in Raleigh, there's one in Richmond, there's one in um, Houston. You know, they're, they're everywhere. So that's really cool. And one of my favorite sayings is, "More music is made outside of Manhattan than in." So there is. Music made all around the world that's not in New York. That being said, a lot of people in New York make great music and there's really important decision makers there. So you, you, can't, you never don't deal with it. Um, but Verdi lived on a farm outside of Parma. Parma was a very small town. He wasn't living in Paris or Milan or anything. He was running and managing a farm and writing nine, you know, great pieces for opera every couple of years. So that's my model, Verdi on the farm. Thank you.